Hey there everyone. With software engineering being one of the most in-demand skills in the job market right now, everyone's looking to start programming. But you may have one question. Where do I start? You sometimes hear all of these terms, C Sharp, C++, Java, Python, and not know where to begin. So if you're a beginner, I'm making this video to give you the amount of information for you to make that decision on where you think you should start first. To be upfront with my recommendations right away, if you're looking to start a website, begin with JavaScript. If you're looking to do almost anything else, start with Python. With that being said, everybody's purpose is completely different. So let me break down my recommendation as well as what the other languages do for you. In order to break down what language you should learn, I'm gonna divide this up into three separate parts. Number one, what's most in demand? Number two, what purpose are you trying to do? And number three, the difficulty of learning or the amount of resources that there are available for that language. So let's start with what's in demand. If you're watching this video, you're probably either looking to get a job at a company or looking to start a little startup of your own. Aaron Jack last year had a really great video breaking down all the languages and which one is likely best to get you a job in 2021. He analyzed all of these languages across a few different metrics. Number of jobs available, number of freelance jobs available, amount of resources available to learn the language, how often the language is used, and then popularity trend of the language over time. From his analysis, the top six languages that emerged were C++, C Sharp, PHP, Python, Java, and then JavaScript. Now the lowest ranking language on this list, C++, is still the sixth best language to learn in conclusion of his study. When he analyzed Indeed, there were 10,000 jobs available in C++. So regardless of what is chosen, there are many jobs available throughout all of these categories above. So the next thing to keep in mind when you're trying to choose a programming language to start is what do you want to accomplish? Are you looking to do a specific task or are you trying to learn to program just to get a knowledge of programming? What is in demand can be one factor for picking a job, but if you need to complete a specific task, you need to know what languages are done for each specific task. Here's a breakdown of a few specific tasks and languages to potentially get started in if you're looking to complete those specific tasks. If you're looking to build a website, I would recommend JavaScript as said before. JavaScript, when paired with HTML and CSS, makes up over 95% of the modern day internet. It's not going anywhere in terms of jobs, and it's a pretty straightforward language to go off and start and use. If you're looking to develop mobile applications, I'd recommend Swift for iOS apps and Java for Android apps. If you're looking to develop games or even get in on the finance and trading side of things, I'd recommend looking at C++ or C Sharp. And then if you're looking to get into data or any type of science-based application, I would recommend looking into Python. Myself, I work in the automotive industry, and the amount of times that I've used Python to process data around vehicles is astronomical. It's an incredibly versatile language with a wide variety of libraries that fit almost any purpose. The final factor that I would account for in picking a language to start is how difficult is the language to learn and how hard is it to find information to solve a problem that you might be stuck on. Oftentimes in programming, you get caught in these little ruts or loops of frustration, no pun intended, that often drive you insane where you don't know how to solve a specific problem. Typically what I've seen for Python and JavaScript are the widest availability of resources to help solve these problems. Stack Overflow, there's websites such as Code Academy or even YouTubers that have detailed tutorials specifically detailing these languages that help make it pretty straightforward to solve these problems whenever you get caught into them. The biggest issue is identifying what is the root cause of that problem. So at the beginning of this video, I recommended that Python be the beginner language for all purposes besides making websites. And there's two specific reasons for this. Number one is Python has a very straightforward syntax. This means what you're typing on the screen most closely resembles what you're probably thinking in your brain. Other languages such as C are often more complicated uh, and what the logic that you're trying to get out of your head might not completely match what you're typing on the screen to serve that desired purpose. So people often get stuck in loops of confusion and frustration when trying to learn those languages. The second one is a big one and it's the vastness of Python's library ecosystem. Python is an interpreted language that's built on different libraries that people have made. So if you're looking to do a specific purpose, odds are somebody else has tried to do it as well and they've published a library around it. So you can often reference other people's code while developing purposes that you do. And this is great for concepts such as machine learning. There's the pandas library that sorts data. There's a gaming library that helps you make primitive games to so even the back ends of websites. Now I know what you're thinking, whoa, 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 John. You said use Python for all purposes beside building websites. And this is because websites are built into two main parts, the front end and back end, and I'll get to that right now. Now, JavaScript is what I recommend for building websites. Not only because it makes up 95% of every website on the internet, but it's integrated both in the front end and the back end of websites. The front end is code that runs within the browser of a window and JavaScript combined with HTML and CSS make up what's known as the front end of the internet. The front end is what you are visualizing when you get to a website. Think of Gmail. 
How Gmail is laid out is all taken care of via the front end. HTML and CSS place specific buttons on the page, while JavaScript takes care of the actions of what those buttons do. For example, when you click on the Socials tab in Gmail and it shifts to a new tab, that's taken care of by JavaScript. Now, since this code is run in browser, we don't always have access to all of the information required to generate a website. In this instance, we can't store all of your emails on the browser. This is where the backend comes in. The backend, or server side, is the portion of the website that you don't see at all. It's responsible for storing and organizing data and ensuring everything on the client side actually works. Now, the backend can be handled by a wide variety of different languages, but Python and JavaScript both have aspects of developing the backend. In Python, there's a Flask or Django library to be able to do so, or in JavaScript, you have Node.js that helps you develop the backend. So that's it for today. I hope every one of you gets to go off and learn a programming language because I think it's exciting. Learning what makes up these computers and ultimately the backbone of our society nowadays uh, is pretty neat to learn in my opinion. So if there's any use cases that I didn't cover, if you need to learn a different language for a specific task, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'll answer every single one of them uh, and hope this video was able to help you out in your journey. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Take care.